Well, welcome everybody. Appreciate everybody uh, braving that Florida storm. I unfortunately promised our guest speaker tonight, I promised him sunshine when he came to Florida. It started raining uh, about 10 o'clock this morning, of course. But I do thank everybody for coming tonight. Can you hear me okay back there? No? All right, Bill, they're asking for a little more juice in the back. Turn me up as loud as Bob Cinebaldi. Test, test, test. How's that? There we go. Now they're all shaking their heads. Well, we have a very special event tonight. Uh, thank everybody for coming. Of course, uh, our guest speakers each and every month are very special to us. But we had someone travel a long way to be with us this evening. But uh, this is, is there anybody here for their first time or never been to a Tampa Bay Fossil Club meeting? Raise your hands. That's quite a bit. Um, what well, we do this every month, we're usually in a, a room across campus, a little closer to the parking lot, so you won't have to walk as far next time. But uh, we'll go through the, the things we do normally. But what I like to do, since there are some new folks here, I can get all of our board members to stand up and raise their hands so you can see who these folks are. Board members? Everybody? These are the folks, thank you very much. Thank you very much. These are the folks that help me run the club throughout the year. They do a wonderful job. And if, at the breaks, if you need to talk to anybody about anything, uh, feel free to do that. Field trips, uh, our fossil show. Um, first, I want to bring up, oh, sorry for the room change. They changed the room on us uh, twice, and uh, that's the reason for the long walk and the signs and stuff, but we do appreciate you making the trek across campus. Uh, the other room they put us in had no facilities, no restrooms, so uh, this will be a little better. If I could, uh, Fred Hendershaw, you want to take us through field trips? Fred's our uh, field trip chairperson. Thanks, Michael. We have uh, three trips this month. The uh, next Saturday will be our typical field trip to Vulcan, where we find the uh, Canoids. The second Saturday from now will be the Peace River. Our normal spot is pretty busy right now with their <clears throat> holiday season, so we're going to Gardner, which is about 10 miles south. And then on the third weekend from now, February 26, we'll have our annual Rux Pit field trip. And that's where we find calcite crystals inside of uh, clamshells. And I'll have this down here so you can look at during intermission. <clears throat> now, some of you have been waiting on the CFI phosphate trip. And I'm sorry to say that the guide who normally takes us on those trips is just snowed under. I've, asked, I've sent three emails and uh, still have had no reply, so I can only apologize. I don't know if we want to get into CFI this year or not. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Uh, I know some of the folks who have been in the club a while uh, kind of get tired of going out to the, uh, some of the places to collect shark's teeth, but I went for the first time in literally 15 years, and I was just lucky enough to go after a, a nice rain in a fairly new area. And I found 70 megs. Now, they're not maybe on shark's teeth. They're not. Um, they're not on display quality. But I did get tired of having to bend over and pick them all up. So sign up for the trips and go. You never know when you're going to get lucky. And they're going to open a new area, or if it's going to rain right before you go. The um, paleo store in the back. I'm going to introduce Bob Cinebaldi, Dr. Bob Cinebaldi. He actually has a. For those of you who are new, he has a one of our books. One of his books has been published by University Pineapple University Press of Florida. He has it back there. He'd be happy to autograph that for you tonight. I'm sure he will point it out here in one second. But if you, I know a lot of you folks visited the Paleo store already. We appreciate that. That's how we get a lot of our proceeds to run throughout the year and to uh, bring people in like Dr. Ag, Dr. Ag and Rod tonight. Um, the, the membership you pay to be in the club really just pays for the uh, Chronicles and the mailing of the Chronicles. So Dr. Bob needs no microphone, trust me. Right, we got a lot of new items today. We're going to go through some of them just real quick before we get started. Uh, we got some hoodies. We've got navy blue ones. They all have a nice big saber cat on the back. And we got, they made sure they got pink for the ladies. And the maroon ones are zipper up in front for those people that don't want the pullover hoodies. We have a few left of Dr. Acura's books. Uh, Quite a few of the, maybe about 10 or 15 of the Disney Masters of Channel Islands, which is, uh, I don't have my glasses 
looks like it's nine dollars. You might sit there and get autograph before you after. Uh, we only have two of the DVDs left of some of the Discovery Channel program. I think we throw up six or eight of those. Uh, there's only one of Ice Age Giants, the hardcover Manic books. And there's a few of the Hudson Big uh, Mike and Phil Smite in uh, Nebraska or is that up South Dakota by that time? It's still Nebraska up there, right? Yeah, I went there like 18 years ago. It's a really cool site. So, and along with our regular list of enemies, uh, we've got all kinds of stuff. We also have, we have a small uh, booklet on uh, the Hudson News site also. So we've got a lot of books, most of them informational, some teachers, one, two, only three or four, the club hats left. Trying to unload those. We do have my book, special company price. Oh, and the other new item, a lot of you have seen the board members, you see the vehicles, and they have the Sabre Cat decal in the back window, or the Tampa Bay Fossil Club decal. And they made a new one that says Tampa Bay Fossil Club with the Sabre Cat right in it, so you don't have to buy both of them. Brand new decals, apparently they'll last a couple of years. Mine's been on my vehicle for 10 or 15. If you get them on your vehicle right away, they're good. But if you don't put them on right away, apparently they lose their sticker or something. I don't know. But anyway, we got some brand new decals and a bunch of other junk. Back to you. Thank you, Dr. Bob. Thank you. Uh, last bit of business, we have Fossil Fest coming up right around the corner. As you guys know, that are regulars, it's a very busy time for us. Uh, March 12th and 13th will be Fossil Fest, and if I could run through a few things, we have the volunteer sheets to sign up on the side table, and I think most of y'all saw that, but if you're interested in helping out with Fossil Fest, we usually take over 100 volunteers to put the show on for the three-day period, starting with a setup on Friday. Uh, Saturday, Sunday, and then the Sunday night teardown. We really appreciate any help you can get. We have a job for everybody. If you have any questions, you can see my wife, Cena, right down here in the pink shirt. Uh, silent auction, anybody has any items that they would like to call out of their collection and donate to the silent auction? Phil Mathis, right here. He's doing a great job running our silent auction. And uh, that's another uh, big money-making event for us at the show. The Kids Fossil Sandline. I think most people have been go back there and watch the kids. They, they really get excited. They really they seem to think they're on a real fossil hunt somewhere. And some of the stuff that you folks have donated to the kids' mine is amazing. I've seen some high dollar fossils come out of there that I know people put in there just because they knew a kid was going to find it for 50 cents. Uh, but it's a great educational experience for the kids. They meet with our members after the fact, go through what they found. We teach them a little bit about the fossils, and they have a great time. And if you haven't ever gone back and watched, please do that. But if you have any fossils that you'd like to um, donate to that, we take scrap to fill with the, the fossil mine. Anything identifiable, we love broken shark teeth you don't want, anything like that. Or even some of the really nice stuff, we'll take that. And I think you can bring that into us at uh, this meeting or the March meeting, or you can even drop it off on, on Friday at the, uh, before the show. Last bit for Fossil Fest is our display cases. Uh, if you haven't been there before, we, we have the club sets up uh, some glass cases with all the stuff we found through the year, and our club members put displays out of, of uh, trying to make it educational. They, they uh, take a lot of time decorating the cases to show off the stuff to the public. 90% of the people who come to Fossil Fest are people who already been in the club, and it, it educates them and it also helps uh, attract people to uh, come join Tampa Bay Fossil Club when they find out you can find some of these things here in Florida. So, if you need help with that, we'd sure appreciate it. And the display case, they're going faster. That sign up sheet is over here on the side as well, right? And, and George Overhaul's. We need, we need several more. Uh, anybody that can have anything that they like to show, uh, <coughs> see us uh, at this meeting or the next meeting. Uh, we're in, I'm in the, uh, on the uh, internet. Give me a holler and uh, uh, we'd like to have, have you display your fossils. If you check out my article, I know it was long and it gets boring when I start talking about some of the stuff we need for Fossil Fest, but if you check out the uh, article, my article in here, it does have the uh, email and phone numbers for Cena, for our volunteers, and for the display cases. Um, so thank you. Go on to our guest speaker tonight. We're very fortunate to have Dr. Larry Agabrod and his wife Wanda, who, she moved, there she is, sitting back here. We got a police officer guarding her. <laughs> Retired from this office. Um, I had the opportunity to meet Dr. Larry Agenbrod uh, via our uh, 
Crawford, Nebraska liaison, Helen Cozzini, who's hiding. There's more people spread out there, so I can't find anybody. Helen Cozzini's here somewhere. Helen Cozzini, she's our uh, liaison for Crawford, Nebraska. If you talk to her, she'll tell you everything you don't want to know about Crawford and more. But um, we had the opportunity to meet Dr. Larry, and he was very friendly to us. He showed us around the mammoth site, he helped us with some teeth we were trying to identify. And I know I've got a lot of calls and emails from people asking, how, how'd you get this guy? This, he's on TV all the time. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen a, a documentary about mammoths? He's, he's, he's on it. Um, so he's really, I guess, a, one of our first television stars we've had here on uh, at the Tampa Bay Fossil Club. But everybody kept asking me, how'd you get this guy? And I, I lied to a few people and said, well, we had uh, our people contacted his people and our agents worked something out. Luckily, but um, in reality, I just asked him, and he said, "Sure, I'll come. Just make sure it's in the winter time." And, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was that simple. But um, sorry for the weather again. I do apologize. I promised him sunshine whenever they got got off the plane from land, all bundled up. But if, if most of you probably already know Dr. Larry Eichenrod. He's the director of the Mammoth Site. He's overseen the uh, Hudson Ming Bone Bed at Crawford for quite a few years. He's one of the original uh, directors of that site. Like I said, he's on TV. Raising the Mammoth, Walking with the Prehistoric Beast, he's done all those television shows. And, uh, a lot of times the scientists don't get credit on these DVDs, so a lot of times you watch one and you'll, they'll pop up and you'll see him in another one. But I'd like to introduce tonight Dr. Larry Agabrod. Give a warm round of applause. Good evening, people. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here, even with the sunshine. <laughs> We've had uh, a week in Arizona, and it was colder there than it was in South Dakota when we left. Um, not while we were gone, but when we left. Okay, we're going to do a little um, trick here. I'm going to flash Cena every now and then, and she'll advance the uh, PowerPoint. I probably ought to tell you a couple things about how I got to where I'm at. And it's not the way you think. I got out of the military, and um, they told me if you got an engineering degree, you had the world by the tail on a downhill pole. So I got an engineering degree, and that year they hired no engineers from the University of Arizona. It didn't make any difference what the specialty was. It wasn't an engineer hired. In fact, <coughs> There are more engineers working in uh, Sears Roebuck in Midland, Texas, and there were geologists working for oil companies and so on. I was told that if I would get a master's, four different companies would offer me a job, so I got a master's. They offered me the jobs. I took the geographic area that I preferred the most, which was the Colorado Plateau. The best thing they did for me was put my retirement date on the stub of every check. And after a couple of years, I said, I'm not doing this till then. So uh, <laughs> I had a chance to uh, go to the University of Nevada and work on an atomic, pardon me? Can't hear? Closer? OK. I had a chance to go to the University of Nevada and work for the Bureau of Mines on an atomic shop, nuclear shop, and did that. The AEC tried to hire me, and I decided I'm too close to my doctor, and I'll finish that. So I did. And um, the way that I got started in Mammoths is kind of a, a wild story, too. As you'll see, a lot of different localities on the uh, screen tonight, it'll look like they happened in sequence. They didn't. They all came in big lumps at the same time. It started in about 1965 when I began working on a bison kill site in Idaho. And in 1966, I was asked to join a group on a mammoth kill site in Arizona. And uh, that was the site that uh, changed my entire way through the rest of my life. 